Good day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In this video, we're gonna talk about polymerization, which is a really important um, aspect of lubricants. We're gonna talk about the growth of molecules by either chain reaction, sometimes called addition, as well as condensation, which is also called like a step reaction. The reason why this is really important, a couple of reasons. Firstly, in the manufacture of lubricants, it's very important, but mainly where we're interested in is it's one of the major contributors to viscosity increasing with age of lubricant. So often you'll know that oxidation and viscosity increase are connected. So as an oil oxidizes, the viscosity goes up. It's not necessarily obvious why that occurs. So we're gonna explain that in this video. So I want you to consider um, an addition reaction first. So this is the most simple one and the most common one and the one that usually is contributing most to viscosity increases. And in order to do that, we'll imagine one of the most basic building blocks of the chemicals industry, which is ethylene gas. Very simple molecule, two carbons and a couple of hydrogens with a double bond in between. Now the thing about ethylene is that we can explain the addition reaction by explaining how you would go from ethylene gas to making a polyethylene molecule. So casting our minds back to a previous video, we talked about the auto oxidation cycle. And the reason that this is really important from polymerization is that what you see in the auto oxidation cycle is that it produces lots of radical compounds. We call these free radicals, which have unpaired valence electrons. That makes them highly reactive. And so they wanna go around reacting with other components within our lubricant. If you haven't seen that video, I suggest you go back and review it. But what you need to know for this video is that oxidation produces radicals which initiate the polymerization reaction. So going back to our ethylene molecule, what happens is that we have to look at the carbon-carbon double bond. So in previous videos, I've said that a double bond is much weaker than a single bond. And if oxidation occurs, it's more likely to happen at a double bond than a single bond. Now, why is that? The fact is that these two um, bonds represent shared electrons between the, the carbons, but they're not shared equally in the sense that they're not in the same energy state. So one of these is what we would call a being in an S orbital and the other one is in a P orbital. So the electron that's in the P orbital is in a higher energy state and it kind of exists around the S orbital. And so it's easier to break that bond and pluck away that electron. So if a radical comes along, which keep in mind has a free valence electron and is highly reactive, remember mother nature always wants to reduce the energy state of what it sees. And so the lower energy state is going to be if that electron is donated to the carbon and instead the R functional group forms a single bond with a carbon. So remember that a single bond with a carbon is going to be more stable than a double bond with a carbon. And we still have a free net valence electron. All right, so now what happens if we encounter another ethylene molecule? Well, again, now what's gonna happen is that this compound is our free radical and it has encountered another molecule with a carbon-carbon double bond, which is weak, and therefore it's going to want to transfer its valence electron and form a carbon-carbon single bond. Therefore, we are able to produce a larger molecule. So remember, we started with just a simple ethylene molecule. It reacted with an unpaired valence electron that came off a free radical. Now it's reacted with another ethylene molecule and it's kind of this self-propagating chain reaction. And you might say, well, this kind of reaction looks like it'll just go on forever. Therefore, we're gonna end up with a lubricant which is made of just one molecule. Never fear, uh, we can stop the reaction and what happens is if this molecule, which is itself a free radical, encounters another free radical, they now both have unpaired valence electrons, which can then form a carbon-carbon single bond, and therefore we stop the reaction. But we've still ended up with a much longer molecule than we had in the beginning. So this is called polymerization. Very useful chemical process if you want to create something like a polyethylene, right? So you're trying to create plastics. But in a lubricant where we're trying to avoid viscosity increases, these long hydrocarbon chains are going to contribute to higher viscosity. That one is the addition reaction. Far and away the more common of the two when it comes to lubricants. And now we can start to talk about the condensation reactions. So condensation reactions are called condensation reactions because there is generally a byproduct. Often that byproduct is water, but it can be other molecules. So that what is 
that byproduct is what we would call the condensate. Generally, these grow by what we call carbon heteroatom bonds. In the previous example, it was carbons bonding with carbons. In this instance, what's kind of driving this process is carbon oxygen bonds or carbon nitrogen bonds, something like that. So let's start with some kind of ester. So here we have an aromatic ester with two ester functional groups. And if we had a molecule come along with a couple of hydroxy groups, then what it's going to do is initiate a reaction where we lose a water molecule. And what I've highlighted in orange here is what is going to be the what we call the repeating moiety. So this is the, the part which is going to form a polyester. So again, if this were to encounter yet another one of the same molecules, again, we're going to lose another water and we end up with a full on polyester molecule. So that's the condensation reaction. Now, condensation reactions are much less frequent in lubricants. We're much more concerned with the addition reaction, but it is worth highlighting because this is how polyesters are made. So that's one reason why it's important, but also because we may infrequently see these kinds of reactions contributing to viscosity increases. Now, this series is all building towards something. So we're, we're trying to put in all the building blocks to explain varnish formation in lubricants. So we've talked about oxidation and now we're talking about this specific reaction and eventually we'll get to how this all comes together into varnish formation. So as always, uh, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, this has been Lubrication Explained.